At least you're presidential intern. Let's see what it took on Howard and fixed for us. Pickle! I hey. do. Yeah, Dang, where you at last wow. And that's a steal. Yes, sir. Dude, you said you wanted a tall, skinny steal like Abraham Lincoln? If that ain't a presidential steal, I'll kiss somebody dead on your butthole. You know, the only thing I see, we gotta put the mash in up there. Josh and I would get back to the shop, and this steel is huge. This thing is like three foot taller than Tickle. Coming out with a nice two inch uh, pipe coming out the top with a small cap going right into the condenser. It looks like something that would have been running Abraham Lincoln's day. I'm was this like three sections? Two sections. Two sections. Two yeah, sections. yeah, what right I did here, Tim. Oh, it's a good solid stuff. Yeah, too. yeah, well, see, look, you see all these right here? Yeah, what is this that? This is braces. It's keeping everything around, sturdying it up. And I even got a sleeve right here along this middle. So it ain't gonna leak? Collar. No, it ain't gonna leak. It ain't gonna separate. I kind of like this little rim right here. It makes it look like it's got a hat on it, huh? Well, you know, it does kind of look like it's got a top hat. That's an Abraham Lincoln steel right there. Good job, man. Yeah. A little cap that comes out. It's almost reminding me of Abraham Lincoln. He's got that eight inch stove pipe hat they used to call it. I mean, really, this thing is looking good. It's looking like it's ready to run. You think it looks like Abraham Lincoln now? Check this out. Got something for you. Here, look. Here's what we do what is right that? here. That's his beard. All right? Beard? Look, look, yeah, that's Abraham Lincoln's beard. All right, look, see, we got. It looks we like he's smiling to me. Right here. <laughs> we got an eye right here. Didn't Abraham Lincoln have a mole about right here? Right? What are you talking about a mold? Yeah. Over that nose. All right. And then here's his mouth right here. All right? There you go. What do you think? And it does look like Abraham Lincoln. It looks like the damn peanut man. Well, <laughs> well peanut man ain't does. got no beard. You guys really think that looks like Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. I think it looks exactly like yeah, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I think he did a good I mean, job. Really? I mean, especially with that mustache thing, that beard and thing yeah. you got going on yeah. there. Well, you did four the jars and seven what, nights what, ago. What in the Our moonshine forefathers, Tim Smith, <laughs> went on a mission to find out if I, Abraham Lincoln, sold moonshine in my store. Well, guess what, Tim? You were right. Outstanding. Now we got the facts. <laughs> now we know the story. While Lincoln sold alcohol in his younger days, by the time he entered politics in 1834, he had to acknowledge the influence of the temperance movement. The anti-alcohol movement that was also closely linked with progressive causes like abolition, particularly up north. As president, Lincoln was clearly sympathetic to those causes, but he also wasn't one to criticize a drinker. With General Ulysses S. Grant finally turning the tide in the Union's favor during the Civil War, Lincoln responded to complaints of Grant's drinking by saying, find out what brand of whiskey Grant drinks and send a barrel of it to each of my generals. Steele's not doing no talking. Well, no, I doubt that Steele's gonna be giving any speeches. I, I mean, yeah. so we put some fire in it. So let's get this stuff out of the truck, get the supplies. Good, because I'm done with this whole crazy Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get mashed in. You got to drop this tailgate ticket. You put that corn on a tailgate. Yep, let's do it. All right. Now it's time to just mash in. You know, we got this sorghum syrup that we went and harvested in Kentucky. We got the white corn that we picked out. We got the recipe down. I mean, you know, we're ready to go. All right, so back in Abraham Lincoln's day, and they couldn't get sugar, they didn't have sugar. So they used a sorghum as a substitute, but that sorghum is a highly concentrated sugar substitute. So you have to break it down. If not, the yeast will not work. So I'm gonna get the water going. We fill these buckets up, get us 25 gallons of water. Hot dog. Yes, sir. There you go. So it's gonna be five gallons of syrup to 25 gallons of water per batch. And we got to do that twice to make one 50-gallon batch. All right, that's one five-gallon. That's gallon. five gallons. Put that in there. All right. That sounds going to waste a ton. Yeah, it does. This sorghum has to be broken down. The sugar is too complex. The yeast will not eat it. We need to heat it up so it breaks it down. It goes into solution is what they call it. All right, guys, we're going to get to grinding corn. Yeah. All right, we're good. All right. 
Stick your finger in there, Joe. See yeah, stick your finger in there and see what happens. Stick this one right here in that hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Finger. laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Cut it off too and just kind of rounded it off. All right, well, you know what? I say we get some corn in there, right? All right. Yeah. There's some good sized yeah. kernels yeah. in this yeah. stuff right here. Kentucky white corn. This is like heirloom corn right here. Yeah. I mean, they used this back in Abraham Lincoln's day because they could eat it, they could distill it, and they get used for a whole lot of different reasons. You know, mm -hmm. today, we done got all these varieties of corn now, but back then, it was kind of a universal thing. With multi-purpose so, corn. This is going to make some good alcohol is what it's going to do. The reason they grew white corn and they had sorghum as a substitute for sugar. So I know for sure that all the moonshiners would have been using all these ingredients, and that's what we're going to be using today. You know what it smells like? Sweet. Sweet. Sorghum. Sorghum. Smells just like sorghum. Smells like sorghum. sorghum. That's some thick-ass sweet stuff yeah, right there. Yeah, look at that, Josh. Boys, you know what this looks like? What's that? It looks just like a big old tub of root beer. Yeah. Damn, it tastes good. Oh, that's good right there. Oh, yeah. It's ready to go in the barrel. Yeah. That's good and sweet. I think we can kill the fire on it. It's real sweet. So once you get that sorghum syrup broken down, then you can add your corn. While you got it hot, that will break down the starches in the corn. So we're doing like killing two birds with one stone here. All right, boys, that's the last bucket, bucket number five. It's looking good, ain't it? Smells amazing. Now, because the steel is so tall, we need to add a little bit of mash at a time. Start the burner, let it start to heat up, and then we we'll add a little bit gradually at a time. It's called charging the steel. This is a, a tickle concept of how to heat up your steel and preheat it. Because if not, you'll be sitting around for six hours waiting for it to heat up. This is the last of it, right, John? That's all I can get out of it. If you hadn't made the steel so tall, we could have filled it up. Well, I did what I was told. So right now, we got the steel starting to show some steam coming out, so it's heating up, so we can get this run going. You know, I don't think I've ever had to have a damn chair in my life to mud up a steel before. She's hot, boys. Uh, well, well, you know, we got the presidential steel set up right here. Yeah. I mean, who's president of this thing? Well, me and you probably got seniority. I think Josh is more like the intern. Y'all kiss well, my ass. Presidential intern? Well, at least you're presidential intern. I mean, I mean, you had to stand on. Oh, he'd ever rung on the way down. Is yeah, that man, not look, bad enough? On a chair. We got liquor flowing, fellas. Oh, we yeah. got. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're well, behind it. We know it was coming. Well, yes, yeah, sir. We got some good liquor flowing right there, don't we? Black flowing, man. Yeah. I'm gonna turn up a little heat. We're discussing who's ranking who in a presidential situation or whatever. And next thing I know, we are making Abraham Lincoln sorghum whiskey right now. It's coming right out. Well, you, you know, the way we charged this thing, we had a lot of them heads go right out that cap. So we do got to clean the steel, though, because that yeah. cap it off brand new copper. I believe this is the closest recipe to what Abraham Lincoln would have been selling at his store. Yeah. Guys, I think this right here is the jar that we need to taste. Not sure what proof it is, but it looks like it's pretty high. Back in the day, they was trying to make more yield. That's what they was trying to make, more volume. She's on up there a little but, bit. But I mean, it is a seven foot steel, too. Yeah. Seven foot steel. I want you to be the first one to taste this whiskey. That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate that. Man, and the first thing I smell is sorghum right yep. off the rip. Yep. We did put about 150 pounds of sorghum in it. Hot dog, son of a gun. That's some good stuff right there, buddy. So you buddy. think we made it? The Abraham sorghum whiskey was amazing. It's sweet from start to finish, and the flavor just matches the smell, and it lasts all the way through. I think you're right. I'm smelling all sorghum. Yeah, Josh. I'm tasting all sorghum. Sweet. Not too much corn. I do taste a little bit of corn on the front, but that sorghum whiskey is laying right there on my palate. It is not going away. It almost makes you want to taste more. It sticks with you. It's really sweet flavor. You know, the sorghum's there through and through. I'm picking up some of the corn on the back. They pair very, very well together. You know, being a presidential candidate one time myself, yeah. if I'd have had this Abraham Lincoln sorghum whiskey with me as I was campaigning, I believe I'd have won that election. We traveled back to Kentucky, and we learned that there's a lot more to Honest Abe than most people know. His connection to alcohol may be the one thing he wasn't so honest about. And then we made a recipe that Lincoln would have sold at a store that at the same time speaks of the whiskey-making traditions of that region. <laughs>